Liquid mercury is a very curious metal. It has a very low conductivity, yet it does have its uses. Accumulated by what we posit is now a lost civilization. It is an area of research which is suspiciously absent from ancient history. Although its presence throughout Mesoamerica can be found documented within modern literature, it is in the form of a powdery red pigment known as cinnabar. Liquid mercury is, quote, extremely rare, end quote. Yet explorers have not only discovered literal pools of it under claimed Mayan ruins, but its presence has also been exposed within the secretive nation of China. There is a reported moat of mercury protecting what is claimed to be a known Chinese emperor from within New World history. Qin Shi Huang, known as the first emperor of China, is said to lie within this unopened tomb, one which we have covered before due to it being guarded by an entire army of terracotta soldiers, fully armed, complete with a cavalry unit, all individual and many still retaining their human-like paint job, along with a curious pigment known as Han Purple recently discovered to be multidimensional in nature. Along with the army are booby trap layers before the entranceway, with cocked crossbows still in place, tipped with poison arrowheads. Yet I digress. We hypothesize this mysterious metal is not only actively overlooked by individuals who are funded to produce answers, not curiosity but that it further connects a now lost, yet once worldwide and clearly advanced civilization, once capable of harnessing and using such fantastic amounts of mercury. Furthermore, mercury can be used to hermetically seal objects from the air and protect them against water damage, with one place we know this to have occurred is that of Oak Island. From inside the actual money hole itself, brought up during sample drillings upon a small piece of parchment. Could these discoveries of an ancient utilization of this metal give credence to the claims of a priceless artifact still be found not only in Oak Island, but also within the unopened Emperor's Tomb? Could there, in fact, be the Ark of the Covenant, like the legends have told of, hidden within this Nova Scotian island? Could there be unimaginable lost riches within a temple guarded by an entire army of multidimensional soldiers along with its moat of mercury? We find such possibilities highly compelling. Teotihuacan, a site we have covered many times here upon our channel. Most recently, we discussed the impressive amount of electrical material found within the numerous pyramids that dot the site, known as mica a notorious modern-day electrical insulator that's physical origins were found to have been from a quarry over 3,200 kilometers away, within Brazil. When Spanish explorers first visited the area, they asked the Aztecs who built these marvelous buildings. The Aztecs replied that it was the Quina Metzen, a quote, race of giants who came from the heavens in the time of the second sun. It is clearly a site of tremendous importance regarding lost knowledge here upon our planet. Knowledge which could have been left within our very distant past. And now, an eight-year project has discovered a secret tunnel beneath the third largest pyramid within the area. A tunnel which archaeologists suspect will lead to a royal tomb. Discovered in 2003 with the use of robotic technology, Similar to the technology used to discover the secret chamber within the Great Pyramid of Khufu, rumored to also be that of a royal tomb. Littered with artifacts which have remained untouched for untold millennia, now thought to be over 50,000 separate items, shedding light onto the life of those who built this amazing place, not only reveal who they actually were, but explain their religious beliefs, their technical prowess, and indeed how they built them but most importantly, for what purpose? Upon exploring the tunnel, archaeologists have discovered an enormous pool of liquid mercury, and supposedly, it is a massive quantity filling a mysterious basin at the end of the tunnel. Could a king's tomb or ritual chamber possibly lay far below this pool of mysterious mercury? Mexican researcher Sergio Gomez has somehow been allowed to release all of these amazing discoveries, found beneath the Pyramid of the Feathered Serpent publicly, receiving little academic resistance since. 
Mercury is toxic and capable of devastating the human body through prolonged exposure. Academia perceived Mercury as having no practical purpose within ancient Mesoamerica. But interestingly, it has been discovered at other sites. Rosemary Joyce, a professor of anthropology at the University of California, Berkeley, said that archaeologists have found Mercury at three other sites around Central America, not to mention our own research into Oak Island, which has also held a legend of liquid mercury for many years. Its presence in Teotihuacan is undoubtedly perplexing and intriguing. Gomez speculated that the mercury could be a sign that his team is close to uncovering the first royal tomb ever found in Teotihuacan. The mercury may have symbolized an underworld river or lake, Gomez postulated, an idea that resonated with Annabeth Hedrick, a professor at the University of Denver and the author of works on Teotihuacan and Mesoamerican art. Quote, the shimmering, reflective qualities of liquid mercury may have resembled an underworld river, not that different from the river Styx. Hedrick continues, if only in the concept that it's the entrance to the supernatural world and the entrance to the underworld, end quote. Not only did the people of Mesoamerica clearly figure out how to create or derive liquid mercury from mercury ore, they also knew of deep underground water systems and lakes that could be accessed through caves. Rosemary Joyce said the ancient Mesoamericans could produce liquid mercury by heating mercury ore, known as cinnabar, which they also used for its blood-red pigment. Yet, just how these ancient people managed to figure all these amazing things out remains a mystery. We may indeed be on the precipice of one of the most important discoveries of our modern age. We will keep you posted. The Terracotta Army – Undoubtedly one of the most remarkable archaeological discoveries of modern times. It is a stone army that so far consists of over 8,000 individually detailed warriors, 700 uniquely carved horses, along with 130 chariots. What makes this feat, and indeed the ancient site so astonishing, apart from the clear, incredible precision, delicacy, and artistic prowess of their creators, is the incredibly advanced technologies found to litter the army and the possible tomb. A supposed tomb with what we suspect is a mystery inhabitant, which, according to academia, this army was created to guard and carry over with into the afterlife. It is claimed that it is the burial of the first ever emperor of China, known as Qin Shi Huang. And although academia has concluded that these ancient soldiers were created during this well-studied, more modern emperor's reign, we feel due to the numerous mysterious factors attached to these miraculous artworks, in which we are about to convey, strongly suggests that not only was this accomplishment far out of the reach of these well-studied recent ancestors, but are indicative of lost civilization, which we have on our channel been searching so long to unearth and lay eyes upon. Firstly, the warriors themselves were all created to represent an individual painted with incredibly precise, lifelike colors, which included a pigment known as Han Purple. A pigment so advanced, chemists were unable to replicate it until 1992. After it was successfully recreated, it was discovered that it eliminates an entire visual dimension, making waves in two dimensions. What's more, most intriguing, is the fact that although academia claims each soldier was a precise recreation of an individual subject, each warrior is around 2 meters tall. A height factor we have long postulated was a common reality, far back within antiquity. The metallurgy is another smoking gun. Swords unearthed in the pits were, regardless of their tremendous age, still sharp showing no signs of rust and still appearing new and shiny. All masterfully crafted, and according to tests of their surfaces, underwent an oxidation treatment with chromic salts. However, based on historical literature, another advanced technology which was not invented by modern man until 1937. Furthermore, 
supporting our posit that these warriors are not dated from an era 2000 years ago, but used as this culture's inspiration, is the fact that regardless of the incredible discovery, no excavation of the purported tomb at the site, claimed by academia as the actual purpose for the incredible array of stone warriors. The Chinese government blocks all attempts to investigate the tomb. We feel this is likely due to the incredibly strong evidence of advanced technologies already publicly shared. Discovered at the entrance to this mysterious lair, like a scene from Indiana Jones, is booby trap mechanisms involving advanced crossbows, loaded with venom-tipped arrows, still in situ within the walls of the entrance. Torque bows, which were clearly created by a far more advanced people than we are currently being led to believe. According to academia, who has put forth a claim, we feel, is an attempt to impress and stifle further inquisition. These masterfully carved warriors were, apparently, created by over 700,000 men over a period of more than 20 years. Yet, as any artistically talented person will tell you, especially a sculptor, these warriors were not created by the hands of untrained slaves, who were ordered to chisel them out from the notoriously fragile terracotta. These warriors were undoubtedly created by individuals of tremendous talent and ability. If one requires further supportive evidence for this obvious hypothesis, a second terracotta army found within Western Han is far more realistic to the era, crudely created, and of a tiny scale, we feel, these warriors are clear evidence of the actual capabilities of this dynasty's inhabitants, and also, we feel, a clear indication that these initial emperors had indeed discovered the original life-size warriors at some point within antiquity, undoubtedly attempting to copy their advanced technologies, kickstarting their success in combat, especially armoring techniques, thus giving academia convenient factors from these recent ancestors to support their attempts to link and claim these remarkable statues as modern creations. This, regardless of the astonishing technological prowess, which these 10,000 strong artistic masterpieces were drenched in. Deciding to ignore such controversial facts in favor of conclusive assumption, which once gained them extensive public faith in their ongoing, severe, selective research syndrome. Before Chinese censorship of the site had become a complete quarantine, modern archaeologists had intriguingly found tremendous amounts of mercury, a difficult element to have acquired in mass 2,000 years ago within the soil surrounding the mausoleum. A chemical also found beneath Teotihuacan, which we feel further supports our suspicions that this site, along with these incredible warriors, is far older and incredibly more advanced than currently attested, and is actually indicative of lost technology left by a now lost civilization. Who actually created the terracotta warriors? Who do they actually depict? Why are they so tall? Who built the complex underground lair, now conveniently shut off, never publicly explored, left triggered with advanced booby trapping. What is within? What are these booby traps protecting? It is a sight we find incredibly compelling. Since the beginning of time, man has searched for different and more exotic materials for use with the pigments used in their art. From simple cave paintings many tens of thousands of years ago, to the perfection seen from masters during the Renaissance, none have ever been as interesting as our next artifact. Known as Han Purple, it has been found on relics dating back 3,000 years. Used in wall paintings, on the terracotta warriors, ceramics, metalwares, and jewelry, the pigment found its way into many ancient Chinese art and amazingly, this intriguing pigment is a technological wonder. It was such an enigma made through such a complex process using many different materials in precise proportions and then heating the mixtures to incredible temperatures. Researchers at the British Museum have discovered that when the pigment is exposed to an LED light source, 
Han purple pigment will emit a powerful ray of light in near-infrared. According to their study, published in the journal Analytical and Bioanalytical Chemistry, the Han purple pigments show up with startling clarity when under the right conditions, meaning that even faint traces of the color which are invisible to the naked eye can be seen with infrared sensors. A complex pigment clearly developed for complex applications. Unlike natural dyes found within antiquity, which are organic compounds, Han purple is a synthetic pigment made from inorganic materials. Scientist Elizabeth Fitzhugh, a conservator at the Smithsonian, was the first to identify the complex synthetic compound that makes up Han purple, including a barium copper silicate. How these ancient people acquired such knowledge is clearly a question which needs to be answered. And although many people often scoff at ancient alien theories, quantum physicists from Stanford, Los Alamos National Laboratory, and the Institute for Solid State Physics of Tokyo have reported that when Han purple is exposed to extreme cold and a high magnetic field, the chemical structure of the pigment enters a new state called the quantum critical point, in which three-dimensional materials loses a dimension. We have shown for the first time that the collective behavior in a bulk three-dimensional material can actually occur in just two dimensions, Ian Fisher, an assistant professor of applied physics at Stanford said in the Stanford report. The researchers have said that the discovery may help understand the required properties of new materials, including more exotic superconductors. Was this marvelous pigment a gift from somewhere else? We find the evidence to be highly compelling. Throughout history, a vast array of individuals who, for whatever reason, became figures idolized by their civilizations. Some even seen as godly-like figures, sentient, divine beings, whom, upon their passage into the next life, were believed to live on, often as deities, according to New World History. The most academically funded research practices in said preparations into the afterlife is undoubtedly that of the mummies found within ancient Egypt. The Valley of the Kings – impressive protective strategy against tomb raiders. Yet the list of similar protective practices is long. The Sphinx, even claimed as the protector of the pharaoh's pyramidal tombs by some, although we, like so many others, based upon a lack of evidence, is untrue due to the pyramids never having been proven tombs. Yet this theme of protecting the dead clearly permeated historians' minds, and, we suspect, this is due to its recurrence throughout history. The Curse of Tutankhamun, yet another relative story deriving from Egypt, with mysterious goings-on during Howard Carter's incredible discovery of King Tut's tomb. Objects of interesting motivations would often be left with these important figures, not just solid gold death masks, thrones, coins, canes, and other jewels, but people of nobility have even been found buried within chariots, complete with eight horses sacrificed for the burial. We have also covered many other booby-trapped tombs, proof of the ancients' own beliefs in their own versions of the afterlife. Yet, unquestionably, the most unique, and due to it remaining unsealed, the most enigmatic of them all, lay still guarded by an equally unique terracotta army. For all soldiers carved to depict an individual man, and the quantum phenomenon interdimensional pigment, Han Purple, still visible upon many of this army. What makes this site so unique from all others is that an entire army, along with other baffling technology, guard a tomb clearly constructed over such an incredible amount of time, and with such enormous effort. It must contain someone, or something, of unimaginable importance. Furthermore, as mentioned in a previous video, poison-tipped, inexplicably advanced compound crossbows have been found still laying in situ, protecting the entrance. Though at some point, coated in sediment, possibly why the terracotta army was found buried. Was this tomb pre-flood? Radar scanning technologies are advancing rapidly, and regardless of the Chinese strict forbiddance to enter the tomb, technology is finally allowing us our first look 
into just what exactly such an incredible display of power has been guarding for all this time. It's an investigation we find incredibly exciting. Teotihuacan is without doubt one of the most mysterious places within the Americas, or possibly on Earth. While the incredible complexity and architectural precision has baffled archaeologists for decades, there is a far more perplexing mystery specifically surrounding the pyramids within this ancient place. The presence of mica, a powerful radioactive insulator, is perhaps one of the biggest enigmas of these great ancient structures. Established or quite possibly re-inhabited around 100 BC until its fall between the 7th and 8th centuries, Teotihuacan was one of the largest cities in the ancient world, with over 150,000 inhabitants at its peak. According to archaeologists, the advanced design of Teotihuacan suggests that ancient builders had advanced knowledge not only of architecture but of complex mathematical and astronomical sciences. Additionally, one of the more intriguing characteristics differentiating it from many other ancient sites is the fact that from the air, Teotihuacan strangely resembles that of a modern computer circuit board. Curiously, when Hernán Cortés and his men conquered the Aztec Empire in the 16th century, they asked the natives who had built such a colossal city. The Aztec replied, We were not the builders of Teotihuacan. This city was built by the Kina Natsin, a race of giants who came here from the heavens in the times of the second sun. The Aztecs were in fact the ancient civilization that named the place Teotihuacan, yet they did not know the original name for the city. The pyramids had remained buried, hidden under several meters of vegetation for unknown millennia, only rediscovered within the last century. Then in 1906, on the fifth deck of the Pyramid of the Sun, a thick layer of laminated mica covering an enormous area was unearthed. At that time in 1906, mica was an invaluable resource, highly priced on the world market. It is used for the construction of capacitors and is considered an incredibly efficient electrical and thermal insulator, which has a melting point of over 1,100 degrees Celsius. Most of the mica found in 1906 at Teotihuacan was unfortunately robbed out, subsequently sold at a great price to resource tycoons. Fortunately, however, not all the mica has disappeared from Teotihuacan. Today, there are still a few places where you can find the original mica, carefully laid within the pyramid's body. It seems for some mysterious reason, the unknown builders of this great ancient city managed to extract and transport this mica from far away. According to tests carried out by the Viking Foundation, discoverer of one of the rooms coated with mica, this valuable material has an unmistakable signature, allowing us to tell exactly where in the world it had originally been extracted. It was discovered that it had come from a region located more than 3,200 kilometers away within Brazil. This in of itself is an enigma. The only real purpose it would seem for the use of such an exotic material is for the management of electrical currents. A theory, thankfully, more and more talented minds are beginning to look at seriously. As a result, we may finally unravel one of the greatest mysteries still plaguing the modern man. What were the pyramids built for? Tibet, the roof of our world. Words do no justice to the untouched beauty of this far corner of Earth. A vast, mysterious, and sacred place, embraced and protected by miles of immovable mountains. Monasteries, built many hundreds, sometimes thousands of years ago, stand in defiance of the elements, precariously placed among the clouds. Many of these very ancient structures are said to have been built on the remnants of once even grander ancient buildings, structures many religions attribute to the gods. Among the seemingly endless mountain ranges lay one mountain which is different, one which is special. It is believed by most of Tibet, and even further afield, that the god Shiva lay buried within this sacred mountain. According to ancient beliefs, this enigmatic Tibetan mountain represents the axis of the world, the stairway to heaven. In many eastern countries, 
Mount Kailash is considered the holiest place on Earth. Some ancient sources even suggesting it is where one could find the mysterious city of the gods. It is indeed regarded within the climbing world as unascendable. A route has never been located and probably never will. Few have been brave enough to even go near this place in the past century. There may be some profound reasoning behind these ancient clusters of human beings, regarding this particular mountain over all others as sacred and as the resting place of a god. There may, however, be ulterior motives at play when it comes to the discouragement of climbers in attempting the peak. A team of Russian scientists, intrigued by the history and a possible suppression of its true nature, have suggested after covert explorations that the top of Mount Kailash is not a natural formation. It is actually the remnants of a giant man-made pyramid of great antiquity. Just how old this pyramid could be currently remains unclear. What also remains unclear is if the entire mountain is a man-made pyramid, disguised by the erosion of many millennia. The research team claimed, quote, The stratum is horizontal with the layers of stone slightly varying in color. The dividing lines show up clear and distinct, which gives the entire mountain the facade of having been built by giant hands of huge blocks of reddish stone." End quote. A mysterious claim put forward in regards to the mountain concerns rapid aging when in the area. After spending 12 hours in the region, the length of nails and hair was equal to two weeks of normal growth in some cases. Several mystics have said that the mountain has a secret entrance within it, leading to the legendary kingdom of Shambhala. Legend also states that when the ice on its peak finally melts, it will reveal the eye. Professor Ernst Muldashev, PhD, a doctor and explorer who traveled to Tibet extensively, said later in his life, quote, There are two underground countries, the Shambhala and Agartha which are each part of the gene pool of humanity and civilization. Information provided by the Thule Society shows there is a higher civilization coming from the Himalayas and divided into two branches, the Shambhala and Agartha. The former being the center of power protected by unknown forces and energy." End quote. An understanding of what sort of pyramid Kailash could be, or indeed just how special it is, may take several years to establish. I will, of course, keep you posted. We recently made a community post pertaining to the remarkable yet little-known or indeed studied discovery made within the extremely ancient city of Petara in modern-day Turkey. And due to popular demand, we are going to cover this peculiar artifact in greater depth. As mentioned, although there are many archaeological sites within Turkey, and particularly within this region, this peculiar feature is rarely discussed within modern academic or archaeological circles. And once you realize what this enormous relic might have once been, you may realize why. Known as the ancient aqueduct of Patera, it was once a series of tubular systems hewn from solid sandstone, presumably running from settlement to settlement. Some parts clearly displaying a significant level of erosion indicating a truly colossal antiquity that has, unfortunately, made reconstruction of some of the pipes quite difficult. Claimed to be that of the Romans, used for transportation of water, however, what is interesting regarding Patera, and indeed many other ancient sites claimed by the Romans as their own constructions, is that it too holds some unexplainable features, things that separate it from the other, more standard Roman architecture. It seems for many ancient, highly eroded sites found around our world, the culprit for construction is often put upon the most convenient candidate, completely absent of any explanation regarding construction. In 1993, a monumental pillar was discovered at Patera, on which is a Greek dedication to Claudius and an official announcement of the building of roads by the governor, Quintus Veranius Nepos in giving place names and distances, essentially an entire public itinerary, yet alas, they forgot to mention the enormous undertaking that was the aqueduct. One has to wonder, where did the Romans get all their ingenious ideas? 
Were they all originals? Or perhaps, as we have posited in the past, akin to the ancient Egyptians, had some helpful head starts from a once far more capable, far more knowledgeable people who left structures still standing to this day? The little research that we have unearthed regarding the original site does indeed indicate that Patera's ancient piping system is in fact not Roman, but the origin of the Romans' inspiration when it came to the creation of their own piping systems. Even the original settlement and building of Patera was attributed to and named after Patera, son of Apollo, a great deity, a mythical figure. It pertains to a first, highly eroded, perplexing stretch of 5.4 kilometers along the steep western slope of Kisla Mountain, down to the community of Akbel. Details from RomanAqueducts.com regarding the research is as follows, quote, It originally consisted of a masonry channel, presumably of Hellenistic age, of which only scant relics remain. This stretch was later replaced, probably by the Romans, by a single line of 55 to 58 centimeter long ceramic pipes. The pipeline was laid directly on the ground, alongside the abandoned channel, and locally positioned on low rocks or in cut rocks." End quote. Are we looking at a far more ancient, far more advanced relic than one is first led to believe? A relic later replicated to a certain degree by the Romans for their own ends. We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.